Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. This is such an important vlog that I'm bringing out four markers. Now, if it was pretty important, I'd bring out three markers, but since I brought out four, you know it's super important. All right, so let's, uh, all right, let's get to it. So one of the things I'm trying to bring to YouTube and to the larger developer community is uh, an experienced point of view in terms of how to look at software development, to how to look at web app development, how to look at programming in general and technology in general. A lot of the people who are active out there are people who don't have a huge amount of experience. It's pretty clear to me. Let me give you some signs of somebody who's still learning the trade, who's still learning the biz, if you will. Somebody who is a language zealot. If you have somebody who says, this language sucks, and that language is the best, and this library is the one you got to learn, everything else is sucks, that's a sure sign of somebody who's still learning. Still needs a little bit of nerdling training, indeed. So... What you'll learn as you become more advanced as a developer, you're going to learn that the language, the framework is not universally good or bad, whichever one you happen to choose. As I've been saying for years now, every single programming language out there, with some very minor exceptions, things have really gone out of date, but generally speaking, they're all really good depending on the circumstances and depending on the developer that happens to be writing the code. Ultimately, the skill of the developer is going to determine whether or not the program that you're writing, the code that you're writing, is going to be any good. So you can produce amazing products in C++, in Java, in PHP, in Python, in Ruby, in classic ASP with VB script. You could produce some pretty good apps as well. Any one of these. Now, what determines which language to choose largely depends on what your focus is, what, what type of work you want to do, and what, you, uh, what the market is and what the job is at that time, right? So if you wanted to, to build a high-performant gaming engine, you're not going to do this in Python. You're going to do this in C++. In C++. On the other hand, if you want to crunch a bunch of data and produce a lot of charts, Though you could do it in C++, you'd be much better off to do it in Python because Python has all these libraries and it just makes it super easy to do. And as you well know, I know some of you are going to be cringing when you hear this, if you're developing web apps for small, medium-sized businesses, I'm a huge advocate of PHP, even though I used to do a lot more work in Java back in the day. Anyway, just try to keep that in mind. All I'm suggesting you that you try to embrace is to be language agnostic. Actually, that's one of the uh, one of the things I'm going to be discussing today. All right. So, what I'm going to talk about today is the top three developer skills for 2018. Yes, I know we're in December 2017, but I'm a forward-looking kind of guy, and so we're going to talk about what you should consider for 2018. Now, number three is going to surprise you. It might make some old school nerds very angry too, but number three is the, is the weird one. That said, number two is kind of weird too. Anyway, just kidding. So number one, what, what's the number one skill set that I suggest that you should learn for 2018? I'm going to, you know, we're going to start with the green pen. Number one, So what does that mean, learn the core? I'm talking about digging deep into programming in general. It's more important that you have a really good grasp of the core concepts and techniques of programming that are universal across all the languages. It's more important that you learn that than to learn some new framework or some new library. In fact, by learning the core, more thoroughly and deeply, spending some time having a really good understanding of what's actually going on when you're writing code, it will be much easier for you, much quicker for you to learn any of the new libraries that come out. What you're going to discover as you become more advanced as a developer, regardless of web development, mobile development, AI, what you're going to discover is that um, 
your ability as a coder is going to be highly dependent on your deep understanding of coding in general, best practices, the core concepts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And another thing you're going to decide, you're going to learn as you go into more and more languages, is that all these languages, whether it be JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, Swift, Ruby, Python, et cetera, they all share about 95 to 98% of the same concepts and techniques. The difference is, is in the little idiosyncrasies within the languages, meaning certain languages are better suited in some very specialized cases. So for example, PHP was designed from the ground up to build web apps. So it's the easiest language to use to build web apps. I'm not saying it's the best necessarily. It has many advantages over say Ruby or Python or uh, others out there, but it, it is the easiest to get up and running with. It's the best in, in many respects, not just in terms of the core language itself, although that is debatable and you're going to get some uh, Ruby zealots or some Java zealots who are going to get really angry at that statement. My assessment of languages has a lot more to do with global considerations, not just the technical merits of the language, because one of the things I keep emphasizing is that technically speaking, all these languages are very, very good. It just depends on what you want to do. So I was getting into web app development for small, medium-sized business. I would go with PHP for a lot of a lot of it's for business reasons. If I was getting into game engine development, of course C++, so we'll get into data sciences and AI, you go to Python, Ruby, you get the, not Python, Ruby, Python, and uh, well, Python, and maybe go. Get the idea, I've covered this in other videos. All right, let's jump into number two, orange marker. Here it is. Become language agnostic. I hinted at that in number one. And essentially, what I'm saying to you is that if you want to really expand your skills as a developer, as a programmer, you should learn to let go of your language prejudices. You should learn to embrace that all languages have advantages and disadvantages. This is something I learned in my own experience as a developer going back to the 90s. I used to be like any young nerdling sapling noob. I used to think that one language is better than the other and everything else can go can suck. And so at one point I was the Java programmer. That's all I would do. Everything had to be Java. As I said in another video, when I had my Java hammer, everything was a Java nail to hit. In reality of the situation, what I learned through experience actually writing code for clients and building commercial projects, that you had to let that go. So as I got more advanced, I would walk in to see a client as a freelancer. Instead of thinking, I'm a Java coder, I would say, I'm a developer. That's it. And I'd walk in, I would assess the project, see what the client needed, depending on their business requirements, on the app requirements, uh, their budgets, etc., etc., etc. And then I would make the assessment in terms of which language, which framework, which libraries I would use for that particular job. So sometimes you go in there and you see that they are, your client may be a small business who leverages a lot of Microsoft technology. And they want to be able to do, they want to have their web app, as an example, interface with uh, some Microsoft Office backend stuff. In that situation, it makes perfect sense to want to get into ASP.NET, c -sharp .NET framework because the .NET framework will provide all kinds of utilities and tools to be able to hook into Microsoft's back-end tools, to hook into Microsoft Com or whatever. So it just makes sense in that situation to look at Microsoft technologies. On the other hand, I've been in other projects where they've already developed a significant amount of tools. Their website was PHP-driven. And at the time, I remember this one particular project that really switched me over from being a nerdling sapling where I was like, Java's the best. And then I realized uh, that I shouldn't have that point of view because in the situation with that particular client, because of the situation that they were in, in it was much better off just to use PHP. So what did I do? Uh, because I knew the core programming at this point, I had several years experience, I was able to learn PHP and start writing production code in a few hours. No big deal. And then I learned by writing PHP for the first time, even though in many respects at that time, it was inferior to Java. At that time, things have changed since then. I still learned a few interesting things about how the PHP community approached things, how the designers of that language, of the PHP language, how they looked at things. And I saw they did some pretty clever things that Java guys, Java guys didn't do. 
So by learning different languages, by being open about that, you're going to get a deeper understanding of programming in general, but you're also going to open yourself up to becoming a better developer and opening yourself up to different projects and more projects. In other uh, gigs, I did a gig for a huge pharmaceutical. Again, I walked in and because of their requirements, I wrote an app for them and something called uh, an HTA, Hypertext Application, which is basically uh, an early form of client-side web app. Uh, it wasn't server-side, it was a client-side using Microsoft technologies. Microsoft had exposed Internet Explorer in the day, uh, something called HTA. So you turn your website into a, an HTA application, Hypertext Application HTA. And by doing that, I was able to leverage COM objects inside of Windows itself. So I developed a, a web-based utility or an app that was able to generate PowerPoint slides uh, via web interface and so forth. Now, again, at that time, I was Java boy, but I realized given what their needs were and given everything concerned, um, it was much better off for me to actually do it in HTA, some, some weird wacky thing at the time. It still is, I guess. All right, number three, number three, I saved the red pen. I saved the red pen. The sun is going crazy, so don't mind that. Okay, number three. Uh, communication skills. This is the one that's probably freaking out a bunch of people. Communication skills are such a huge part of being a good developer. And it's just not worked on enough. One of the most lucrative positions to get into, lucrative means you make a lot of money, is to be that person who understands code and who understands how to communicate with the people who are not coders. Those are the clients. So I just uh, adjusted for the light. Stupid sun is going crazy on me. Anyway, communication skills, huge. If you're one of those individuals who understands code but can also speak non-nerd to the suits, your clients, the people who don't know code, you will be in a great position because you're going to be that interface to be able to figure out what the requirements are for the particular application that you're building, the particular program, program that you're building. And these people are rare. So what you should consider working on is your ability to, com to communicate in non-nerd words and in a simplified way, both writing and verbal, it's huge, it's huge. It served me so well in my development career. And as an added bonus, it will help you to get dates. Cheers, have a good weekend, bye-bye.